Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Amazon Pro Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Corn School. Today we're over in Lambton County, Ontario, and I'm talking with agronomist Ryan Benjamins. How's it going? Very good. Thank you, Bern. It's good to be with you this morning. Awesome. Hey, now we're in a nice cornfield here. It's late May. The crop is pretty much in the ground in Ontario, and it's time to get out and scout. And I want to talk to Ryan about what he does when he heads out to assess a field like this. Ryan, it's, it's looking good. What do you see and what do you look for when you walk into this field? Yeah, when I walk into this field, burn the first thing I look at is, is plant population. Um, then I also look at things like plant spacing, uh, uniformity of the crop, and then ma some management factors of things like how did how how was the tillage, uh, planting performance, um, and even things after that that where we maybe start to see some variability uh, pick up and and things we can manage. Awesome. Hey, let's do a little scout and. Let's see what we can learn from you on a scout tour. Sounds good. So Bern, the first thing I want to look at is what, what is the plant stand uh, per acre? So we, we work back to one thousandth of an acre. So in 30 inch row spacing, we would be measuring out 17 feet, five inches. This field we're in today is actually 20 inch row spacing. So I got to measure a little bit further, 26 feet, two inches. And I've got my tape measure laid out. So it's just a matter of counting the plants and uh, easy math with uh, multiplying by 1,000. So in, in this field here, I've got the row on either side. That one's got 31 plants. This one's got 32. Uh, so fairly good. We seeded 34,000 in plant uh, seeds per acre, um, but we do have the odd uh, skip or miss here. Um, one in this row and one in this row here. And uh, good time to dig it up and have a look to see whether it is actually a planter performance with a miss, uh, maybe it's insect related um, or environmental. Could be a numerous things of, of why this plant is not here. So there actually is a plant, uh, so it's not a planter issue. Uh, the seed looks like it's about the right depth, at about that two inch depth. And uh, here's what we've actually seen quite a bit of this spring burn is uh, some corkscrew or leafing out underground uh, on some of these plants. So not poor planter performance, uh, more environmental conditions after planting. The next thing I want to look at is plant spacing. So in this uh, field, we actually have very good plant spacing. Most of them uh, being about consistently that eight inches apart, next to no doubles, um, no large gaps other than the things we saw with uh, some, some corkscrew and leafing out underground. Uh, in terms of planter performance, we're bang on. And after that, we look at plant to plant uniformity. So we want all these plants more or less to be carbon copies of each other. And as I go down this row, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, we had a good spring where it was fairly dry. Uh, we didn't have heavy rains or crusting issues. More or less the corn came out of the ground in a week or less. And a lot of these plants are very uniform stage. We do find the odd one and it comes back to plants uh, that had some of that corkscrew or leafing out under, underground that eventually do emerge. So here's a good example where the leaves are kind of curled, twisted, eventually see the sunlight and it is a good uh, leaf or two behind its neighbors. And uh, as the crop develops, that plant is going to be always further behind. Uh, if it does produce a cob, it's going to be a smaller cob, a runtier, and uh, there's some things we could manage, but knowing that it was mainly environmental, not, not really uh, um, planter performance related, um, we always fight that, that challenge between do we plant early um, or do we plant late and get that perfect uh, picket fence stand? So um, in this situation, it was somewhat cold related and we, we do have a little bit, there was some residue here, uh, maybe even a little too much residue in the seed furrow uh, that could have also slowed this plant down uh, from its neighbors. So what we would do in future years, 
Uh, this planter is equipped with a row cleaner. Uh, we did have some primary tillage, but it, there, there's surprisingly quite a bit of residue still on the surface. Uh, because we've got the row cleaners, we can maybe adjust them a little more aggressively in future years to keep some of that residue out of the seed furrow. Next up for me is checking seed depth and uniformity of seed depth from plant to plant or row to row. And I find it's, it's somewhat of a slow process trying to determine how deep you're seeding uh, with the planter. It, you're out there with a seed finder digging and you're, you're trying, trying to determine where to measure to. Uh, sometimes the ground can be a little bit loose or fluffy and uh, you're, you're a little uncertain of exactly where, how deep your seed was. At this stage, it's quite easy. I just pinch it off at, at the soil surface. I dig it up. Find the seed, get my measuring tape out, and here we are an inch and three quarters. So burn knowing that uh, we got inch and three quarter seed depth here, I'd like to dig up a few more plants around it. Uh, maybe it's neighbors or row beside it. And if they were all about inch and three quarters, I would probably adjust the planter next year to go a little bit deeper around that two inch seed depth. Um, but in this situation, seeing how uniform the crop is from plant to plant, uh, we had good germination all at the same time. We were in the good moisture. I'm not too concerned about uh, this field at inch and three quarter. So the last thing I like to look at is the condition of the sidewall. And the sidewall tells you a lot about what the condition was like at the time of planting. So some of the earlier planted fields this year, uh, we really didn't, it, it was quite dry, at least on top because uh, we had next to no rainfall, but we ha also had, um, we didn't have a lot of heat at the time. So it was dry on top, but you get down to seeding depth at, at say two inches and it was quite wet below. So some fields we're seeing this year in Ontario, we're seeing uh, the sidewall actually, once it turned dry mid-May, it's actually cracked back open. So uh, we don't see so much of that in this field. Um, if I start digging around here, it's almost hard to see any sidewall at all. Um, and that's kind of what we like to see. We like to see that soil or that seed down in the soil, very uniform seed to soil contact and no smearing along that sidewall. So this sidewall has been very well, uh, almost non-existent. And that's exactly what we want to see. So some of the things that I would improve upon in this field next year would be a little bit on residue management. Um, there is some residue here that we can uh, adjust our row cleaners a little more aggressively to get some of that out of the, out of the seed trench uh, while not at the same time going too aggressive that we end up planting into a hollow. Um, Seeding depth was changed uh, as this producer kept moving along. We've got seed further down that is at that two inch depth. Uh, so that adjustment was made and was probably the right decision. And overall, we've got a pretty good stand here. We're 90% we're plus stand, uh, good uniformity, good spacing. Uh, it's, it's lined up to be a very high yield potential field. <laughs>